Hi, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler. I'm often asked, what are the differences between a medication such as Nystatin and a medication such as Diflucan and their effects on yeast? And what are some things you have to be concerned about um, and aware of when using these medications? Both of them are considered antifungals, which means they have an eradication or an inhibiting or a killing effect against yeast organisms, most commonly candida. Now we know that candida is a big problem for many kids on the spectrum and we treat commonly using these medications to help at least lower the levels of candida um, and sometimes trying to lower them quite significantly um, to bring on improvement for a child's behavior because we know that yeast can be a contributing factor to STEMI behavior, to behavior such as silliness, goofiness, and giddiness, uh, and, and other you know, abnormalities uh, that are quite common in autism. So the differences are Nystatin is what's considered to be a local antifungal, which means when you take it, it has a local effect in the digestive tract. So essentially it's inhibiting the overgrowth and killing off colonies of yeast that are lining the digestive system. There's no significant absorption of Nystatin into the bloodstream, so taking Nystatin long term is really of no major concern, um, and it can be taken many, in many cases for quite prolonged periods of time, sometimes months, if not years, for certain individuals on the autism spectrum. The way I think of Nystatin is think of Nystatin like Pepto-Bismol. Pepto-Bismol we know coats the stomach. Nystatin essentially coats the inner lining of the digestive tract. And because of that coating effect, we generally have to take it multiple times throughout the day to try to keep that coat in place. So, you know, three, four, in some cases five times a day, although that's difficult to do. Um, minimally three times a day, ideally four. Um, and that in overall, essentially then, Nystatin becomes quite effective. Now, compare that to Diflucan. Diflucan is considered to be a systemic antifungal, which means when you take it orally, it will be absorbed into the general circulation, into the bloodstream, within approximately two hours. So it's going to have more of a systemic effect throughout the body. It will also have a local effect inside the digestive system as well, um, but it is being absorbed through the body, and so therefore it's being metabolized through primarily the liver. So there is a potential risk for long-term use of something like Diflucan to cause liver stress. And so if your child is taking Diflucan, you know, you're going to be wanting to do blood work, you know, minimally every six to eight weeks in my experience um, to make sure that there's no problem with respect to liver stress. Now, what you can do with something like Diflucan is take it for short periods of time, maybe that's two weeks, three weeks, or four weeks, and then take a couple week break and then cycle back to it. Um, in, in some respects, that works quite well. There are other medications that fall into the same category of Diflucan. Another one is called Nizorol. Lamisil and Sporinox. The ones I use most commonly in my practice are Diflucan and Nizorol, and both of those are systemic antifungals, so prolonged periods of time you be, new, do need to be checking liver enzyme function. Um, Nystatin, on the other hand, as I mentioned, doesn't really need to be followed with liver enzyme function because it's a local antifungal, so it just has a local effect in the GI tract. So again, just to recap, Nystatin and Diflucan are two antifungal medications. Nystatin it has a local effect in the intestinal tract with very minimal um, systemic absorption, if at all. And Diflucan is a systemic antifungal where it will be absorbed from the digestive tract and then circulated throughout the body and then metabolized through the liver. So with Diflucan, you do need to be checking uh, blood tests periodically for liver function. Thanks.